On this episode, we're going to put death and resurrection and judgment all together. You won't want to miss it. These are a couple of life's greatest questions. What happens to you after death? Am I judged at death? And what happens to the resurrection? What's going on with all this afterlife stuff? In, a, in this topical arc that we're in, we're looking at the topic of beyond death. Beyond death. This is Inverse. My name is Justin Kim. And in the studio, we have Israel, Siku, and Jonathan. I want to say hi to you guys. Hi. Uh, we're going to go to Revelation <laughs> chapter 20 and verses 11 through 15. And we're going to see how death and resurrection and judgment, how, it's all, how it all comes together. So take out your Bibles, whether it's on your phone or your analog uh, book, and, and read along with us. Uh, Israel, can you pray for us before sure. you start it? Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you speak to us in our experience today. And we ask that you would open our eyes to be able to see things the way you see them, understand things the way you understand them. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Jonathan, verse uh, 11 through 15, please. Yeah. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Yeah. So let me ask you this question. Like, um, I mean, these are heavy topics, yeah? Like death, resurrection, and uh, judgment. Like, why, why does this matter to the average young person? Um, well, it matters first because everybody experiences death. Mm -hmm. um, that is the one thing that all humanity has. Like, we're all born. Mm -hmm you know, not of our own choice. And then we will all die if Jesus doesn't come before mm -hmm. our death, you know. Mm -hmm. So those are the experiences that are promised. Marriage, maybe, maybe not, you know. College, maybe, maybe not. Graduation, maybe, maybe. But death, For sure. um, birth and death are something that happens um, to everyone. And so um, the Bible t t tells us to, to teach us to number our days, mm -hmm. you know, to, to go to the house of death, like to, to visit this topic mm -hmm. because it gives perspective to life. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, when we're young, if we had a view an understanding of this topic, I think it would actually add value to the way that we live our lives, mm -hmm. you know, for the, the entire duration of it, not just because mm -hmm. we're old and we're yeah, about yeah. to die. Yeah, hey, I mean, that's a great answer. I, I, I didn't even know that. I was just wondering to, to know what your <laughs> thoughts were. Um, yeah, no, we, we all experience, will experience death uh, in some, one way or another. I guess we shouldn't say all. There will be those who are alive at the coming of Jesus mm -hmm. who will be alive. Uh, but there's, you know, we also established from the last couple of weeks that death is not eternal burning. Uh, but it is a sleep, mm -hmm. yes, and that we don't go upstairs and downstairs and upstairs and downstairs, but we're on, um, what I, I my, my words is pause in the ground until we are resurrected uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and turned on again with different, different, yeah. anyway, and yeah. every analogy does have its limitations. <laughs> so let's go into, yes, Israel. Yeah. Well, I think what today's, the reason why today's topic is important is mm -hmm. because what many people think about when they think about death, when and they don't understand it from the biblical perspective. Mm. They think about an eternally, you know, burning lake of fire or hell where people are tormented day and night. Mm. And finally, we reach a point, I think, in our study where we address that topic of what hell in the in the um, in scripture looks like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Just wanted to share that. Yeah. 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 That's good. <laughs> very good. Very good. Very good. So let's go into the text here in Revelation chapter twenty, verse eleven through through fifteen, mm -hmm. and. Um, uh, Tell the narrative uh, for us, Jonathan. Explain to us what does happen at death, and, and are we judged, and how does that work? Give us yeah. the, 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 the chronological narrative. Right. Mm -hmm. So what is interesting here is uh, we see in verse 11, it talks about a great white throne and, you know, talking about God sitting on them, and then there is a judgment taking place. Mm -hmm. Now, if we look in other passages in Scripture, especially the book of Daniel, Daniel and Revelation uh, go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. They're connected. They're mm -hmm. both prophetic books. Uh, and 
apocalyptic books. Apocalyptic, I was yes, going yes. to look for the word in my mind. Yep. And what we see there is a description that there will be, at some point in our timeline, um, uh, a, a and a judgment, a judgment takes place. Mm -hmm. And according to the prophecies, which we don't have time to go into all the details today, mm -hmm. but uh, this to started in 1844, mm -hmm. in the year 1844, um, according to Daniel. And if you're eight. confused about that date, yes. we want to encourage you to go to inversebible.org and go to Thank the you. Bible study on the book of Daniel, which actually talks about the 22,300 day prophecy yeah. and brings us to 1844. Just wanted mm -hmm. to insert there no, to give good. us a context. Yep. And, and the Bible describes on another, uh, places as well, Jesus talks about the judgment, uh, that there will be a time where God looks at our lives and a determination is made, you know, you have made a choice to, to, to put your faith in Jesus or you did not. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and God in His grace and wisdom uh, and with His authority as the Creator, um, he, uh, the, ju the judgment takes place. And then as a determination is made, you're either rewarded eternal life or eternal non-existence, which is mm -hmm. the second death. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this is what is being described here uh, in a very short and brief uh, form. Mm -hmm. So the judgment has different uh, segments. And so it starts with an investigation, just like here any on earth, any you know, crime or any situation that is coming before the court, there has to be investigation, there has to be mm -hmm. looking into the details. And then all things considered, a judgment is yeah, you know, made, a decision is made. Mm -hmm. So the same thing is happening in the courts of heaven, of course, in a multidimensional way. You know, we don't fully, a lot of this is symbolism and it's just trying to express to us this reality, mm -hmm. what that exactly looks like. You know, we, we, we don't know all the details, but we do know that God is fair mm -hmm. and that He's looking at every person, uh, person's life and making a determination mm -hmm. that is very transparent mm -hmm. to everyone. Just Yes, um, like to, to, to add to, to the, the mm -hmm. chronology that you were talking about, you know, you have the, the judgment, the 1844, you know, judgment begins with, in the house of God, right? Yes. Um, God's people are judged to see they're claiming to be, you know, on God's side. Are they truly, are they truly covered with the blood of Jesus Christ yeah. and judgment, you know, Jesus comes and he says, you know, come you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom that is prepared for you. And, you know, they go up to heaven and you have that 1000 years. Um, that, that after the second coming of after Jesus. the second coming mm -hmm. of Jesus, that the dead who are dead in Christ they rise, First, first Thessalonians chapter four, <laughs> and then we who are alive and remain, if we are alive at Jesus' coming, we're caught up together with them. Um, and those who have not accepted Christ into their lives, they die at His second coming. Mm -hmm. So they are the uh, unrighteous dead, and then those unrighteous living also die, mm -hmm. and then those who are righteous go up to heaven. And then we, we have described here another judgment experience that happens, mm -hmm. right? Where those who are dead are now being judged, right? Mm -hmm. And then it says that then the dead gave up, in verse 13, Revelation 20, verse 13, mm -hmm. the sea gave up the dead who were in it. It says, and death and Hades gave up the dead who were in it, and they were judged, each according to his works. And then th there's like this other judgment that happens. After that judgment, then you have this death itself dying, right? Mm -hmm. um, so there's kind of like these two phases of like an investigation that is happening. Yeah. And second round is those who are unrighteous are being judged like to see, okay, to see the justice of God in the condemnation that they have received, mm -hmm. right? And we, it's determined that God has been just in their condemnation. So after, just like the, the judgment being meted out at his second coming so that those who have accepted him receive the reward of their choice. Mm -hmm. Here judgment is meted out again on those who have not chosen him yes. and they have chosen death. So they die along with death itself dying and that is the final death, mm -hmm. you know, and then that's the end of this whole Problem. horrible saga of sin and mm -hmm. death and suffering. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, scripture, as you guys mentioned, has a lot of Bible verses on, on judgment mm -hmm. and, in, in, and just in my imagination. It's like we put it all into a blender and then we mix it all together and we pour all those verses out. They naturally gravitate to three, kind of like oil and vinegar and the spices for mm -hmm. Italian dressing, but like three, <laughs> three, three groups. Yeah. And the first group, um, and we can go to uh, Daniel 7. Mm -hmm. Daniel 7 that, that you mentioned, uh, Jonathan. Uh, it takes place at 1844, and then there are books that are open. Oh, we can go to Daniel 7 here. Yeah. Uh, Daniel 7 verse 9, mm -hmm. the Bible says, I watched 
till thrones were put in place, the Ancient of Days was seated, his garment was white as snow, his hair, uh, the hair of his head was like pure wool, his throne was a fiery flame, wheels of burning fire, a fire stream issued and came forth from uh, before him, a thousand thousands ministered to him, ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him, the court was seated and the books were opened. Yes. So we see a judgment form here. Yes. Um, God does not need judgment for himself. No. He is all-knowing. He is all-powerful. He doesn't need to open himself up for judgment, but he does. Mm -hmm. And he does this for not for himself and not for the human beings either, because at this point, human beings are not in heaven. Who is the audience in this first judgment? Mm -hmm. It is the 10,000 times, it's the angels. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming the angels are, are wondering how, how, how do we know who's redeeming or not? So God opens up this, this judgment process for the angels. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then whenever this time is up, then Jesus comes at the second time we are taken up to heaven. We are told in 1 Corinthians, I think it was chapter, uh, I don't know exactly what chapter, I shouldn't say this, but uh, look it up and look it up on your uh, search. But we said, the Paul says in 1 Corinthians that we will judge angels, mm -hmm. right? And we'll judge each other and the wicked. So for a thousand years, mm -hmm. now human beings are included in this judgment process. Yeah. And uh, we see that in, in, in uh, some, a vignette of that in, in, uh, Revelation, in 20. Revelation 20. God is, God is making himself completely transparent here. Yes. And I think that's amazing mm. because like, you know, God has every right to just do whatever he wants, you mm -hmm. know, but he wants love to be the, the fabric of the universe that holds everything together. Mm -hmm. And so in order to make that possible, you know, justice has to take place and he has to be transparent and make himself vulnerable to critique, so to say. And so by, uh, by showing everything he does, this is what the judgment is all about, to show his character in the process mm -hmm. of, of in, in, in his character revealed throughout the process of redemption, the process of dealing with human beings. Um, he's making clear to the angels, to the whole universe and to human beings, you know, why they are where they are mm -hmm. in eternity. Mm -hmm. and, and that is, f God is showing his fairness uh, and his, his righteousness. It, al it, also, it also shows the fact that angels are living by faith, mm. you know? Yeah. So as That's we a interact good with, one. yeah, a a as we're living in life right now, many, there are many questions that angels have about how is it possible for God to allow into heaven people that have completely created a disaster in the entire universe. Mm -hmm. And so God has to allow for the angels to be able to review how in his great wisdom, he takes a person and is able to transform their heart and then, and then fit them for heaven and also guarantee to the angels that they will not experience because they themselves have experienced the, the result, the impact of sin in a sinless universe. Mm -hmm. So now he's got to also show to them how in his great wisdom, he's going to be able to use this transformation and at the same time, never allow for sin mm. to re-enter into the, the universe and the galaxies and, and whatever. I and mean, I think that's it. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's key to emphasize Nahum, that the affliction will not come the second time. So God's orchestrating all this, not in his grandeur and just pomp and circumstance, but so that doesn't happen again. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I just love how there's stages though. You have the first stage is for the angels. Second stage, it's for those who have been saved and human beings for a thousand years. Um, it's interesting how long that will take and mm -hmm. mathematics, you can do it anyway. And the third uh, judgment has where it's the most vague of the three judgments. And uh, when we come back out of the break, we'll talk about the third executive judgment. So stay with us. Welcome back. We've been talking about judgment, a oh, happy topic that is. But in the light of God's character, it is a happy topic. God is revealing himself to the universe of the decisions that he's making in his own mind. And we look at the three stages of judgment. One, the investigative judgment that happens after 1844, given only to the world of angels. The second, the millennial judgment that takes place for a thousand years, given to the redeemed human beings. Mm -hmm. And then the executive judgment at the end. They at the end of time where all the wicked will realize why they are wicked. Mm -hmm. And there's that verse where everyone will kneel and bow, acknowledge the name yes. of Jesus and Lord, you are just in your, your decision. Mm -hmm. And that's, I, I believe, where the, um, in chapter 20 of Revelation, verse 14, then Hades and death, death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And mm -hmm. this is where the end of all things happens. Mm -hmm. and sin will not emerge for the second time. So this is kind of the big narrative going on. 
uh, hey, but here we are in the 21st century, and how do we intersect with this uh, this meta, the meta narrative? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Israel. there's very there's a lot of lessons we can learn from what the scripture is trying to teach us, and first of all is that. Uh, you know, the, the way we live today will impact our future. You know, the decisions that we make now will impact our eternal future. Mm -hmm. um, we can make, we can create habits, we can make decisions that in the end we will regret. And we have to be uh, under the understanding that whatever we do has, is recorded. What should that make us do, right? What, should, what response should that evoke from us? It should not evoke a response of fear. It shouldn't evoke a response of legalism, I'm going to save myself, but it should evoke a response of, Lord, help me, right? Mm. Like, let me come to Jesus now while there is hope, while there is time. Because that in itself is recorded. Yes, that, right, that, yeah. exactly, yeah. 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 Every, every time I come to him, every time I ask him for help, these things are also recorded, right? And so, it, and, and the reason for that, the reason why now is the time to come to Christ is because after a person dies, it is too late. Yes. And, and this is something that is critical to understand that once death comes, that is the end of my ability to come before the judgment yeah. of God to be saved or lost, right? And that's and so, been a reoccurring theme this entire quarter. Yeah. 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 And so uh, now is a time because when we're dead, it says, you know, in verse 12, it says, then the dead were judged according to their works. That means that this judgment takes place with the people who have already died, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then the other thing, too, that, that, that um, is important to note is that the lake of fire is prepared for the purpose of the elimination of death. Mm -hmm. In other words, God has a plan to destroy death because death is the ultimate evil, mm -hmm. right? It is what brings about separation between God and his people. So uh, th there is a lake of fire that has been prepared and it has been prepared for death and for Hades. That is the purpose of that. Anyone who chooses to go that direction will also burn with it. Mm -hmm. But 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 uh, but eternal um, eternal death is something that takes place at the end of life. It is not someone does not go, uh, you know, in, in an intermediate time and is floating yeah. around. The lake of fire is something that takes place at the end when God forever wipes away all sin and all um, all evil. And, and just to clarify by that, it's not eternal punishment. We're a place in fire and eternally burning. Right. We are completely destroyed, right. well, that's not, yes. annihilated. Yeah. Where the Bible scripture says there's ashes there yeah. of the wicked, meaning right. they don't exist yeah. anymore. Just and wanted to. I appreciate it. it's not eternal punishing, yes, but it is an eternal punishment. The right? effect yeah. is a, yeah. of it is, is eternal. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, and and then the the last point is that Revelation chapter twenty is is it's not the end of scripture, mm. right? Mm -hmm. But there is Revelation 21, there is Revelation 22, which speaks to us of the ultimate plan that God has for humanity. Mm -hmm. And that ultimate plan that he's got for humanity is not a plan of death, but it's a plan of life. God has in his purpose, we have been predestined, we have been created, we have uh, the purpose of our, of our existence is to be able to live forever with him. And, and, and to be eternally happy. This is God's yeah. plan for us. And so the judgment exists. Now is the time in life to prepare ourselves for that judgment. Mm -hmm. We prepare mm -hmm. for that judgment by coming to Christ, surrendering ourselves to Christ moment by moment, so that when he comes and when our books are open and my name comes before this great and mighty and awesome trial, it is found, of, it is found and it is said of me, that I've surrendered myself to Christ. And when Christ looks at my record, or sorry, when God looks at my record in that place, in place of my guilt and my sin and my shame, he sees the beautiful blood of Christ covering mm -hmm. that record. Mm -hmm. in, in addition to that, I would add that when, and I, I, love, I love how you just, how you just articulated that, but when we ask God to when we repent and ask God to help, in a sense, that that's being recorded and yes the spotlight is on us mm -hmm. but the spotlight is also shared with God and the mm -hmm. angels are watching mm -hmm. if the sinner says help me and what and then so now the, yes. the, 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 the focal point of action is now on God right. what is what is what does God do to the sinner mm -hmm. how does God intervene into life and save and justify and sanctify and glorify the mm -hmm. individual and then because of that action everyone can say oh Lord you are justified yeah. because and, and, and to see how God does and, and we know from Scripture 
that God always does something. Mm -hmm. But then what is the human response to right. when God sends that grace? I mean, Secret that, and then that was exactly where mm. I wanted to go. Um, <laughs> was that like in the judgment, yes, we are, our names are brought up in the judgment and our characters, you know, are under scrutiny. But in essence, for a Christian, what ends up being seen is, you know, you have claimed the blood of Jesus to be covering your life. Is that blood does efficacious? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, how does it work in your life? And, and is God actually able to do what he said he can do in the life of somebody who is surrendered to him? Mm -hmm. yeah. So in essence, it's God's character that's on trial, on trial mm -hmm. right? It's yeah. God who is being judged, which brings me back to right at the beginning when we're saying when, when the devil was tempting Eve in the Garden of Eden, and what he brought into question was God's character. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, that's what's being brought to question in the judgment is, mm -hmm. is God's character just? It circles is he, back here. Right, yeah. it circles back to the character of God. And so when, 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 we, when the judgment is set, when the books are opened, um, how we stand in the judgment is merely just a reflection of who God is. Exactly. And is he just in the judgment that he has meted out? Mm -hmm. um, it, it made me think of when we were talking earlier of First Peter, of First Peter chapter 1, where he talks about you know, this salvation, and then it says, which angels desire to look into. Mm -hmm. So that the angels are curious to see how this whole salvation thing works out in the human life. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought of that when you're talking about the judgment, the investigative judgment that is going on right now. Angels are curious to see how does God, how does the blood of Jesus work in the life of a Christian, you know, and, and, and. Because they have not been redeemed. They don't need to right. be redeemed. Mm -hmm. So they're curious about how does this redemption thing work? Right, right, and so right. So the right. more they see that the sinner has changed to a righteous person, they're like, wow, God is really awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and in the end, you know, when I, I guess the, the picture that I, I have of, you know, go, going to heaven by God's grace, when the books are open, if there are people that, that I would have expected to see or wanted to see mm. or, and they're not there and the books are open or they're people that I definitely did not expect to see and they are there, is to see, okay, Amen. yeah, <laughs> yes, but how, how does this work, God? Like, how yeah. can you be mm -hmm. just if this person is here who hurt me so bad and I died before seeing them saved, you know? Right. Or, or um, you know, people, historical figures that we would think are definitely not going to make it into the kingdom. And, oh, lo and behold, they're there. At the end, like, we get to... It's really that God is on trial, so to speak. And mm -hmm. it speaks to, I think, was it John who said, the, the vulnerability of God, mm -hmm. yeah. like permitting himself to be questioned, yeah. you know? Like, I don't like it when my kids <laughs> question me. I'm like, <laughs> do you know how old I am? <laughs> like, but God is older than sure. all of us, right? <laughs> but he's willing to, like, yeah. to put himself out there like that and be willing for us to, to, to investigate him. Yeah. You know? That's yeah. pretty crazy. And that, also, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'm just going to say that the beauty of this, and also Israel mentioned earlier, is that in, in, as, a, as a response to, to God's vulnerability in the judgment process, in the salvation process, we see his character of love, and we respond to that by, you know, submitting and, and surrendering because he's so beautiful and amazing, and, and he's doing this all without breaking his integrity. He's, he's, he, he really is love. He really is just. And that comes, becomes clear to the whole universe. Mm -hmm. um, and so the motivation for, for living a life, my life now, knowing that everything is on record, does mm -hmm. not become fear and, oh, I, you know, you know, I want to make it and I'm scared, whatever. Mm -hmm. It is a motivation of like, I love God. God yeah. is amazing and He is working in my life, you know, according to His good pleasure. So mm -hmm. it's just that the beauty that He makes that, that mm -hmm. it's almost, a, it's not a byproduct, but in a way it's a byproduct of the judgment is like we see His character uh, maybe no. It's the main point, really, as you said. Yeah. Like it's it's his ca character is is revealed in the process. Our response to to the judgment is sh really should be yeah. wow, like beautiful. Awesome. I want to be with him. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You know, if if we can go to um, Ephesians chapter three, Ephesians verse three. eight onward, it it portrays one of the most beautiful pictures of the judgment. I think it's important for us to state that our characters are going to be judged. Mm -hmm. But I think to 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 emphasize what Siku says above this is the fact that really our character is a testament of the character of God, right? Mm -hmm. If we come to God and he's not able to change us, it's more revealing about him than about us. Mm -hmm. But here it says in verse, uh, it, it says in verse eight, to me, who am less than the least of all the saints, this grace has been given. Paul is saying, I have received this grace that I should 
preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. What are these unsearchable riches of Christ in verse 9? And to make all see what is the fellowship and here's of the mystery which from the beginning of the ages mm. has been hidden in God who created all things through Jesus Christ. Here it's talking about this great mysterious thing that God had from the very beginning. Verse 10, to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church, by the church as the people of the church, to the principalities and the powers in heavenly places, according to the eternal purpose which was accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. So he is saying, the purpose of life today is to speak of the, the, the wisdom, the manifold wisdom of God that is hidden from ages past. Verse 12, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. Therefore, I ask that you do not lose heart in your tribulations, whatever glory. Verse 14, for, we got to skip to verse 14. For this reason, he says, for this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. That's the character. Mm -hmm. Verse 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to understand or comprehend with all the saints, that's the people, what is the width, the length, the depth, and the height to know the love of Christ, which passes all knowledge, that you may be filled with the fullness of God. And now he says, to him who is now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above mm. all that you can ask or think according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by, through Jesus Christ to all generations. This is the purpose. <laughs> Sorry. This is the purpose of what the judgment ought to do. It should cause us to come to him mm -hmm. and to surrender our lives to him. Amen. 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 May it be recorded that all of us, that we turn to the Lord, that we repent, and that may that be recorded in all the books of heaven. That's my prayer. Hopefully that's the prayer of my, my friends here. All of you out there, may that we wait on how the Lord will intervene, change, resurrect, redeem all of us in our hearts to be the more like Lord Jesus. On behalf of my team and the studio, I want to say thank you for joining us. God bless you. We'll see you next week here in Inverse as we will continue the topic of looking at beyond death. Bye-bye.